For several days, a large werewolf has been scaring the residents here. You know that the werewolf has a wife, and she's the only person who can calm the monster down and help him return to his human form. You have found three girls. Each of them might be the werewolf's wife you're looking for. You ask his wife to approach him, but none of the girls admits she's the one you need. So, you have to make your own choice. Do you see some wool on the girl's clothes? It's the wolf's fur, which means she's the wife. She walks up to the monster, hugs it, and the werewolf turns into a human. You're hungry. You drop by a pizzeria. The owner of the restaurant says that someone has taken all his weekly earnings from the safe. The thief wore gloves and left no fingerprints. The video cameras were turned off. You know this pizzeria has had several similar incidents over the past year. Every time, the insurance company paid the owner the entire amount that had been stolen. You're sure the owner took his own money to use the insurance again. Take a look at the office and prove that the owner is guilty. Look at the air vent. Behind the grated hatch, you can see the bundles of the stolen money you've been looking for. Suddenly, someone shoved Stacy into the water. Down in the Sea Kingdom, Stacy met Neptune. He was sitting on his throne, surrounded by three mermaids. Neptune asked Stacy to return the pearl necklace to his wife. She had recently lost it, and Luke found the necklace on the shore. Can you guess which mermaid is Neptune's wife? The third one. She's the only one who's wearing an engagement ring. When Stacy gave the necklace to its rightful owner, Neptune snapped his fingers. His guards brought Luke. Neptune said, I'll let you go home safely, but you have to choose the right door. There were demons behind the first door. They were ready to eat anyone who dared to come in. There was lava all over the floor of the room behind the second door. And finally, there was a laser beam that could cut through anything it touched behind the third door. Which door should Stacy and Luke choose? The third one. They can crawl under the beam without touching it. You were in a hurry and forgot to lock the apartment door while leaving. Someone got in and locked the door from the inside, and you had to use the key to open it. You see a human silhouette standing in the shadows and realize that you know this person. Who is it? It's the woman who asked you to help her brother. She was wearing a red bracelet. The silhouette has the same accessory. I came here to thank you in person. The door was open, but you weren't at home, the woman says. A mysterious biologist invites you to his home for dinner. He takes you down to the basement and puts three plates of weird items on the table. One has wild mushrooms with white gills. The second is filled with castor beans. The third has some fish brains. Which one is safe to eat? The plate of fish brains is the only dish that isn't poisonous. Someone got into Matthew's house during a severe rainstorm and took a lot of expensive stuff. The man called the police. They came over and started to interview the neighbors. Nicole said she lived alone and worked from home. She was inside the whole day. Jerry explained he was a chef in an Italian restaurant. He came back from work only half an hour ago. Sophia told the police she hadn't left home because she was ill. Who was the intruder? It was Nicole. She claimed that she'd been inside the entire day, but there was a wet umbrella in the corner. Kim and Ashley are best friends. They decided to spend summer vacation in Italy together. They were very lucky to buy cheap plane tickets. Their flight was at 10 a.m. Unfortunately, when the girls arrived at the airport, they realized it was the wrong one. Now, they have two options. To take a high-speed train for $100 to go to the right airport or stay here and buy tickets for a later flight for $400. What should they choose? The second option. Look at the clock on the wall. It's 9.55 a.m. 
the boarding for their flight is already over. They won't make it even if they take a high-speed train. Kim and Ashley bought new tickets. They went to the airport restaurant to drink coffee. But one weird detail scared Kim away. She suggested they should leave that place as soon as possible. What did Kim see? This woman over there is a zombie. Wow! How did she get through security? When it was time to finally board the plane, it turned out there were no more economy class seats left. Kim and Ashley were offered to fly in business class. There, the girls saw three people. When the flight attendant served them fresh juice, she whispered that Kim and Ashley were extremely lucky. They were about to travel next to a famous Italian billionaire. Can you guess which of these passengers is the billionaire? This glamorous lady is a good candidate. But it's very unlikely a billionaire will wear a 100% polyester coat. This guy's business suit is very elegant, but look at his shoes. They seem quite cheap and worn out. This funny gentleman must be the real billionaire. Although his outfit is rather casual, his gold watch looks very expensive. Once, a bank was robbed. The police suspected that one of the bank's security guards had helped the criminals. Detective Justin had to question three of them. The first security guard told him he had heard some shouting and rushed there, but by the time he arrived, the criminals had already been gone. The second security guard explained he had been drinking a cup of coffee at that moment and hadn't even heard anything. And the third guard said he had run after the thieves, but he had to lace his boots. Without a second thought, he crouched near an emergency exit. At that very moment, the door opened and hit him on the head. When he came back, the criminals had been gone. Justin immediately understood which guard was guilty. Who was it? It was the third guard. All emergency doors open outwards for safety reasons. The police have been looking for Kyle for two days. The guy went hiking and never came back. Finally, he was found. Someone had hit him on the head and left him lying in the bushes. Kyle only managed to say, friend, in a weak voice, and lost consciousness. The police officers had three suspects, all of them Kyle's friends. Zachary said he spent the last days at work getting ready for a conference. Jesse told the detective he'd sprained his ankle and had been in bed for four days. And Billy explained he'd been to New York for business. The man even showed the police officers his boarding pass. Who's behind the accident with Kyle? Police immediately noticed that Billy had showed just one boarding pass. Then how did he get back from New York? His story sounds fishy. Uh-oh. Tommy was exploring old caves outside the city when he got trapped in a mysterious dungeon. There were three ways out, but only one of them was safe. Behind the first door, a fire was raging. Behind the second door, there was acid rain which could melt any substance within seconds. Behind the third door, there was a huge brown bear that hadn't eaten for two years. Which way should Tommy choose? Tommy should choose the third way. No animal can go for two years without food and survive. Barely. <laughs> it was a stormy day and it had been raining for several hours straight. A car accident happened in a tunnel. The yellow car crashed into the red one. The driver of the yellow car said it had been raining so heavily he hadn't seen anything. So, the accident wasn't totally his fault, but the police asked the man to stop lying and claimed it was all his fault. Why? The accident happened in the tunnel. It couldn't be raining there. Mrs. Cabell is the owner of a small company producing expensive designer cups. On Friday, when the working week was finally over, she got a call from her bank. The woman found out that someone had stolen all the money she had saved. Mrs. Cabell realized it must have been one of her workers. So, she asked each of them what they had been doing that day. Sloan, a sales manager, said she'd been talking to their clients and looking for new ones. Atticus, a potter, said that he always made one cup a day, and he showed all the cups he had done that week. Sierra, a designer, said that she'd been working. 
but also admitted she hadn't really been productive that day because of some family issues. Who lied? Atticus, there are five working days in the regular week. The man said he made one mug a day, but he only showed four mugs. It means he missed one day of work. Tyler is on his way to visit his grandma. She lives on the opposite side of the village. It's her birthday, and he wants to give her the cakes that he has prepared. Unfortunately, there are seven bridges that Tyler needs to cross to get to her house. And there's a mermaid under every bridge. The mermaids always require payment from those who cross their bridges. Before Tyler can cross the bridge, he has to give the mermaid half of all the cakes that he's carrying. But since the mermaids are kind, each of them will give one cake back to Tyler. How many cakes should Tyler take from home to make sure that Grandma receives exactly two cakes? Two. Tyler will have to give half of his cakes at each bridge, but he'll still get one cake back. If Tyler takes two cakes from home, he'll manage to stay with two cakes after every bridge. Will is going on a jungle trip for one day. He asked his wife to pack something to eat, something to drink, and something to help him stay warm. When Will opened his backpack, he found just one thing. Can you guess what it was? A coconut. Will can drink coconut water. He can also eat the coconut meat. And finally, Will can use the coconut peel instead of wood to warm himself up. Nina decided to play a quiz game. She kept asking the same question to everyone she met. And each time, she got a different answer. Can you guess what the question was? The question that Nina asked was, what is the time? Take a look at this picture. Can you predict which tank will fill first? Tank 5. The connection between tank 5 and tank 2 is blocked. So the water will move into the fifth tank from the first one but it won't go to tank 2. Therefore, tank 5 will fill up first. What about this complicated structure? Can you tell which of the tanks will fill first? Okay, here's the explanation. Tank C is pretty tricky because it's blocked on the right side. So, the water will move to tank J. And now, it will move to the right and go through tank L. At this point, it seems pretty obvious that tank H will get filled first. But that's wrong. It's blocked as well. So, the correct answer is tank F. There is a wide field of corn. A fox finds its way into the field and starts running. Can you find out to which point the fox can run into the field? The fox can only run to the middle of the field. After that midpoint, the fox will actually be running out of the field. Stacy is a weather forecaster. It's raining today at 11.57 a.m. Can you help her figure out the chances of sunny weather in 72 hours? The chances are zero. In 72 hours, it'll be nighttime. How is a fly different from a mosquito? A mosquito can fly, but a fly cannot mosquito. This is Rick, and these three ladies are Melanie, Meg, and Millie. Melanie loves strawberry ice cream. Meg loves blueberry ice cream. And Millie 
hates ice cream. Can you find Rick's wife among these women? It's Meg. She has a matching ring on her finger. Ice cream preferences don't really matter here. 1.5 guys eat 1.5 burgers in 1.5 hours. How many burgers can 9 guys eat in 3 hours? More hours mean more burgers. And more guys mean more burgers. The time was doubled to 3 hours, and the number of people rose 6 times. Therefore, the number of burgers will be 18. Take a look at this arrangement. It consists of 15 matchsticks. How can you remove exactly 6 matchsticks to make 10? Here's the easiest way. Frank is a grandfather. His grandson is about as old in days as his son is in weeks. The grandson is also as many months old as Frank is in years. The sum of their three ages is 140 years. How old is Frank? Can you guess? To solve this riddle, we need some calculations. Let's say the grandfather is A, the son is B, and the grandson is C. Since the total age is 140 years, we can make up the following equation. A plus B plus C equals 140. Also, the grandson is about as many days old as the son is in weeks, which can be expressed in this equation. 365C equals 52B. And finally, the grandson is as many months old as Frank is in years, so 12C equals A. Now we can put this information into one big equation and calculate the final result. 12C plus 365C divided by 52 plus C equals 140. 624C plus 365C plus 52C equals 7280. 1041C equals 7280, so C equals 6.99. Since the task said that the grandson was about as old in days as his father in weeks, we can round up that number to 7. Therefore, Frank is 84 years old, and his son is 49. If you multiply all the numbers on your phone, what number will you get? zero. Remember that multiplying any number by zero always results in zero. Jerry and Sarah went hiking to celebrate their anniversary, but only the wife returned from the vacation. She went to the local police office and said, Jerry got lost in the woods while I was sleeping in our tent. The sheriff arrested her, saying, I've talked to your travel agent. We suspect that you're involved in Jerry's disappearance. Sarah didn't inform anyone about the trip. Why did the agent and the sheriff decide that she was guilty? Sarah bought only a one-way ticket for her husband and a round-trip ticket for herself. It means that she was sure that she would be returning alone. Can you tell which of the following statements is true? One statement here is false. Two statements here are false. Three statements here are false. The second statement is true. Thirteen caves are arranged in a circle in an enchanted forest. Each of the thirteen caves has treasures and gems. Every day, the cave's guards can move the treasure to an adjacent cave or can keep it in the same cave. Meanwhile, every other day, treasure seekers visit the forest 
and have enough time to enter any two caves of their choice. How can the treasure seekers make sure to find the treasure in the minimum possible days? One of the treasure seekers should move clockwise every day. And one of the treasure seekers should move counterclockwise. This way, they'll find the treasure in a minimum of seven days. Alice was sitting in her hotel room. Suddenly, she heard a knock on the door. She opened the door and saw a creepy woman standing outside. The woman said, Oh, I'm really sorry. I thought this was my door. Then she walked through the corridor to the elevator. Alice didn't know the woman. She locked her door and called the hotel security. Alice asked them to arrest that woman. Why did the woman seem suspicious to Alice? If the woman thought the room was hers, she would have used the keys. But she knocked on the door. Alex, Amy, Allie, and Austin got trapped in a jungle. There's a bridge that can lead them back to the city safely. But the bridge is very old and dark. It can handle only two people to pass through. Also, the family has only one flashlight to move through the dark. Alex takes one minute to cross. Amy takes two minutes. Allie takes four. And Austin takes five minutes. How can they all get to the other side in the minimum possible time? Here's what they've got to do. Alex and Amy should go first. It'll take them two minutes. Then Alex should spend one minute going back to Allie and Austin. Now Allie and Austin should take the flashlight and cross the bridge. It will take five minutes. Then Amy should come back to Alex. At this point, they've already spent 10 minutes. And now Alex and Amy will have to spend two more minutes crossing the bridge. And this is how all of them will reach the other side in 12 minutes. Stephanie is a college professor. A supervisor will be visiting her class tomorrow. The supervisor can ask the students any questions. They can be either easy or difficult. Stephanie will still have the right to decide which student will be giving the answer to each question. Stephanie wants to leave the best impression. What instruction should she give to her students to maximize the chances of receiving a correct answer for each question? Can you help her? This task is pretty easy. All Stephanie needs to do is to ask all the students to raise their hands on every question. But those students who know the right answer should raise their left hand. And those who don't know the right answer should raise their right hand. This strategy will help Stephanie to get only correct answers. The supervisor will also be impressed because all the students will raise their hands. Molly and Polly are twins, but only one of them is a real police officer. Can you tell who? Molly. There's a camera filming Polly because she's an actress. Anna runs a chocolate factory. She offers all her clients a special deal. Anyone can exchange five chocolate wrappers for one chocolate bar. Robert spent two weeks collecting the wrappers and managed to find 77. Yeah. Can you tell what maximum number of chocolates he can get from Anna? Robert can get a total of 19 chocolates. Here's how it works. First of all, 77 wrappers can be exchanged for 15 chocolates with two wrappers left. After unwrapping the new 15 chocolate bars, Robert will be able to exchange 15 wrappers for three more chocolates. Now he can use the remaining two wrappers and the new three wrappers to get one chocolate bar. 15 plus three plus one equals 19. Henry is an astronaut from Earth. He landed his spaceship on another planet in an unknown galaxy and began to explore the city and its citizens. Very soon, 
Henry felt a desperate need to go to the restroom, but when he saw these two doors leading to the ladies' and gentlemen's bathrooms, he got really confused. The problem is that Harry doesn't speak the local language, and he can't ask which door is for men and which is for women. Thankfully, he met a local guy, Mo, who could understand English. But he can speak only his native language. What two questions should Henry ask to figure out the right door? He should point at one of the doors and ask, Is this the men's restroom? Then he needs to remember Mo's reply and ask, Am I a man? If Mo says the same word, then the restroom Henry is pointing at must be for men. And if Mo says a different word, the restroom is for women. There were nine candies in a box. Nine people took nine candies, but one candy is still in the box. How can it be possible? It's pretty simple. The last person took a candy and the box. This way, one candy remained in the box. Hmm. On a cold night, four friends were roaming around the neighborhood. At one point, they tried to get under one umbrella, but the umbrella was too small. However, all four of them managed to stay dry. How can that be possible? It's possible because it wasn't raining. Meet Erica and Jin. Do you have any idea why he pushed her? Because they're shooting a movie. Do you see that cameraman reflected in the window? Billy organized a betting game for his friends. According to the rules, he will place two candies, one yellow and one red, in a dark box. If the player picks the red candy, they will get $5,000. But if they pick the yellow candy, they will have to pay $500. Unfortunately, Billy's a liar. He put two yellow candies in the box instead of one yellow and one red. Billy's friend, Wendy, watched the players losing the game one by one. But when it was Wendy's turn, she won $5,000. How did she do it? She picked a candy and, without showing it to anyone, ate it. Then she picked the remaining candy, which was yellow, and showed it to everyone. Billy had to admit that the first candy had been red. Otherwise, everyone would find out he was a liar. Nina went speed dating and met three handsome guys. The next day, each of the guys asked her out. Can you help Nina make the best choice? Brad didn't even ask the girl if she wanted to go to the restaurant or not. Besides, he's pretty rude and bossy. She barely knows Rob. It's not safe to go to his place alone, so Nina should choose David. He looks nice and polite. Hello. Amy has two strings. The only thing she can say for sure is that when you light one end of either string, it takes exactly one hour to burn. Can you help Amy measure 45 minutes with the help of the strings? She should light both ends of the first string and one end of the second string. In 30 minutes, the first string will have burned completely. To measure the remaining 15 minutes, she should light the second end of the second string. When it's fully burned, we'll know for sure that 45 minutes have passed. Adam is a famous opera singer. He's going to perform for the king and queen for seven days in a row. In return for his work, they should pay him one-seventh of a gold bar per day. Adam doesn't accept prepayments. He requires a daily payment, which is one-seventh of a gold bar. What's the fewest number of cuts they should make to be able to pay Adam each day? Just two. Here's how it works. Day one, cut one-seventh of the gold bar and give it to Adam. Day two, cut two-sevenths of the gold bar and give this piece to Adam. He'll give you one-seventh of the bar back. Day three, give the singer the one-seventh piece you received the previous day. Day four, 
give Adam four sevenths of the gold bar, and he will give you the one seventh and two seventh pieces as change. Day five, give Adam the one seventh part of the bar. Day six, give him the two seventh piece and get the one seventh one as change. And finally, day seven, give Adam his final one seventh piece of the gold bar. Jenny and Sam arrived at a picturesque campground. They had to set up a tent. There were three good spots in the forest, in the field, and near the lake. Which place should they opt for? The best option is to choose the field. Wild animals live in the forest. As for the lake, look, a zombie is hiding in the bushes over there. Probably not the best neighbor. George was walking down the street. Suddenly, a wizard popped out of nowhere and teleported George to his castle. He offered the guy to choose between these three doors. There's a hungry tiger behind the first door. There's an angry dinosaur behind the second door. And the room behind the third door is filled with toxic gas. Which door should George choose? The second one. Dinosaurs went extinct millions of years ago. Jerry has an apple tree. The number of apples on his tree doubles every week. After 30 weeks, the tree is completely covered with fruit. Can you guess how many weeks the tree needs to get half covered with oranges? Oranges don't grow on apple trees, but if I asked you about apples, the answer would be 29 weeks. Because, as we know, the number of apples doubles every week. In the ocean, there's an island. On the island, there's a house. In the middle of the house, there's a glass of water. Inside the glass of water, there's a coin. What's in the middle of the ocean? The correct answer is simple, the letter E. Harry went to a party. He liked these four ladies. Hey. He wanted to talk to one of them. Which one should he choose? Take a look at the first lady's hand. She's a zombie. The second lady has a vampire bite on her neck. She can turn into a vampire any minute and ruin the date. And the fourth lady is a ghost. So Harry should go and talk to the third lady. Hello. Detective Thomas received a call from Holly. She said, Please come over. I got robbed. It happened so fast. I left my purse in the backseat of the car. When I stopped at the traffic light, someone opened the door and snatched my purse. Detective Thomas hit the road and rushed to the crime scene. But when he saw Holly, he realized that she was a liar right away. How? Holly has a two-door car. How could a thief steal something from the back seat? <laughs> there are three houses. One of the houses seems very weird. Can you tell which one of them looks suspicious? Look at the footprints. They lead to and from houses one and three. So people come and go from those houses. As for the second house, the footprints only lead in one direction, inside. People come in, but they never go out. Take a look at this messy floor. Can you count the number of laptops that you can charge with the help of these extension leads? The cord of extension lead three is torn. As for the second lead, one of its outlets is broken. Extension lead 4 has only one outlet, which makes the entire thing pretty useless. And extension lead 6 doesn't have any cable at all. Now let's see what we can do about it. Connect extension lead 1 to the wall outlet. Then connect extension lead 2 to extension lead 1. This way, you can use two outlets from the first extension lead to charge two laptops. One outlet of extension lead 2 can be used to connect the fifth extension lead, and one of them is useless anyway. Now we can use two outlets from extension lead 2 and all four outlets of the fifth extension lead to charge six laptops. 
So the total number of outlets in use will be eight. Simple. Danny and Diana are spouses. They jog in the park every morning. To match every two steps Danny makes, Diana needs to take three steps. If both of them start with the right foot, how many steps would they make before their left feet are in the front at the same time? They'll never reach that goal. Here's how it'll go. I'm a five-letter word under you. Remove the first letter and I'm above you. Remove the second and I'm around you. Who am I? Well, have you managed to crack this riddle? It's a chair. Great job. Driving through the country to visit their family. One day, late at night, they were on a lonely country road. That's when a powerful storm broke and their car tire burst. They had to leave the vehicle to find help, but there was nothing and no one around. Some time later, they came across an old and spooky mansion that seemed abandoned, but the guys decided to try and see if anyone lived there and could help them. They arrived at the mansion gate. On a metal address plaque, it was written, The House of Riddles. Gemma and Andy got suspicious, but they desperately needed shelter from the storm and some help with their car. So they decided to enter, but the gate was locked. There was a digital security keypad on it and nothing else. Suddenly, they heard a sound coming from the gate intercom. A voice said, The answer to this riddle of mine is the password you need to unlock the gate. I sleep by day and fly at night, but I have no feathers to aid my flight. What am I? That's a bat. When the guys arrived at the door, they saw there was something engraved on it. Stop right there, wanderer. Don't knock on the door just yet. For if you knock more or fewer times than you should, that you're gonna regret. Here's your second riddle. I am an odd number, but I become even if you take away a letter. What am I? Gemma and Andy realized that the number equaled the number of times they had to knock on the door for it to open. Can you help them figure out the correct number? The answer is seven, so they had to knock on the door seven times. A scary old butler opened the door and let the guys in. The door suddenly closed behind their backs and then just vanished into thin air. There were no doors in the room they had entered. The butler said, Welcome mortals to your doom. To make it out of this house, you have to solve every riddle in every room. If you can't, you'll stay in this place forever. Here's your riddle for this room. Which bride is marrying this groom? If they managed to figure out the answer, a door would appear. If they could not, well, too bad. Do you see the shadows behind them? The third bride's shadow is holding hands with the groom's shadow. They're in love. So she must be his chosen one. After they answered the riddle correctly, a door appeared in front of them. They got into the next room, which was a library. Three books fell from a bookcase in front of their feet. Then they heard the butler's voice echoing. You have to open one of these books, but choose wisely, because whatever creature the book mentions, it will appear here. If Gemma and Andy opened the first book, a venomous basilisk would come out. If they opened the second book, a giant piranha monster with razor-sharp teeth would appear in the library. If they opened the third book, a fire-breathing dragon would charge at them. Which book should they choose? Since the giant piranha is a water creature, it can't survive on land, so the guys should choose the second book. The library door opened and they walked into the next room. It turned out to be a dining room. A large mirror covered one of its walls, yet the reflection of the room in the mirror had some differences from the real room. Can you spot them?
the reflection of the deer statue in the mirror has more antlers. In the reflection, you can see someone hiding behind the curtains. But there's no one besides Gemma and Andy in the room. And lastly, in the mirror, one of the plates on the table is different from the others. But in the real dining room, all the plates are the same. Gemma and Andy felt very hungry. Thankfully, the next door that opened led them to the kitchen. There were three different chefs inside. The first chef was a zombie. The second one was a vampire. And the third chef was human. Each of them was holding a pie in their hands. But only one pie was safe to eat. Which one? Do you see the bugs coming out of the zombie chef's pie? Yikes! The pie that the human chef is holding is glowing in a weird way. Looks dangerous to me. So, they should choose the vampire chef's pie. Because that's not blood, that's cherry sauce on top. If it was blood, the vampire would have already eaten that. After they answered the riddle, two doors appeared in front of them. One of them had Gemma's name on it, and the other had Andy's. The butler sneaked behind the guys and pushed Gemma through the Gemma door and Andy through the Andy door. Gemma fell down a pit and found herself in a mysterious garden. She accidentally woke a garden gnome who had been sleeping. He got very angry with her, and still, he agreed to let Gemma go if she answered his question correctly. He showed Gemma three tiny mushroom houses and asked which one was his home. Can you figure it out? Do you see the flower on the gnome's hat? The door handle of the second mushroom house handle is the same flower, so that must be his home. Andy, on the other hand, fell into a magical dungeon. The dungeon guard was an ogre, and he looked very pleased to finally have a prisoner. Yet he agreed to let Andy go if the guy chose the correct magical portal to escape. Two magical portals appeared in front of him. Each of them led to a room. Andy had to stay inside the room of his choice for five minutes. The first room was full of poisonous gas that would knock him out in four minutes, and the second room was filled with water. If Andy opted for this room, he would have to be chained to the floor, with the water rising really fast. In which room can the guy survive? Andy should choose the first room. He should take a breath and try not to breathe for a minute. After that, he'll have to wait for four minutes for the door to open, and then he can escape. Both Gemma and Andy were magically transported to the hallway after having answered their riddles correctly. They were happy to be together again. At the end of the hallway, there was a door, and in front of the door, a witch stood. She placed three long magic wands on the table in front of her and said, You do not need to do anything to one of these wands. One you must break in half, and one needs to be even shorter than that half. The witch added that they could only answer once. And if their answer was wrong, she wouldn't open the door. So, can you tell which wand should be the longest, which one they need to break into half, and which one needs to be the shortest? Do you see those spiders hanging from the ceiling? Since the door is shaped like a spider, they must be giving Gemma and Andy a hint. The silk thread that the first spider is hanging on is the shortest, so the first wand needs to be the shortest. The silk thread that the second spider is hanging on is the longest, which means that the second wand needs to remain as it is. And the silk thread that the third spider is hanging on is of a medium length, which means that the guys need to break the third wand in half. The witch opened the door and Gemma and Andy entered a bedroom. Three spirits were floating inside, each of them claimed to be the owner of the mansion. Gemma knew only one of them was telling the truth. Who is it? The spirit of the elderly lady is telling the truth. Why? Let's rewind a bit. Did you notice the portraits hanging on the walls in the hallway? There's a portrait of this very lady. That can only mean she used to be one of the owners of the mansion. The next stop was a living room. When they walked in, Andy saw something weird. What was it? A face appears and disappears in the fireplace. The guys entered a study next. What's so weird here?
The fingers of this medieval knight's armor are tapping on the sword. The next room was a guest bedroom. What's weird here? The crystal ball is showing someone trapped in the basement. Gemma and Andy decided to take a look at the basement in case someone really needed help. Yet, they had to crack another riddle to enter. There was a password panel, and they needed to type in seven digits to unlock the door. They had no idea what the passcode could be. Luckily, there was a note on the wall, and this word was written on it. What does it even mean? Turn the note upside down. What do you see now? The letters look like numbers, right? So the passcode is 187837. There were three people in the basement who claimed to be trapped there, but only one of them was telling the truth. Who is that? Do you see the stitches on the elbows of this lady? She's a creepy rag doll, so she's lying. And this man has claws instead of fingers. He must be a shapeshifter or something. Then it must be this guy who's telling the truth. So Gemma and Andy took him with them. After the guys answered every riddle in every room correctly, the butler appeared again. Thank you, travelers. Now you're free to go. But this, you must know. All of us in this house are cursed. Answer this one last riddle for the curse to be reversed. Once we are finally free, we'll help you with your car too. You'll see. There are nine people in front of you. One of them is a monster who cursed us. Tell us who. This guy has two horns that are hiding in his hair. He is not a human. He's a monster. Detective Callum arrived at a jewelry store because the owner reported that someone had stolen a diamond. He didn't let any customers or a cleaning man out, so they were the main suspects. Everyone denied stealing the diamond. There were no fingerprints found. Can you help Detective Callum decide whom he should arrest? He should arrest the man and the woman wearing gloves. Since no fingerprints were left, it must be one of them, or both. Olivia sneaked into an old mansion to explore it and got trapped inside. There are three ways out, and all of them are dangerous. Behind the first door, the roof and the floor are made of magnifying glass, and the sun would burn anyone who enters. Behind the second door, there's a dangerous doll with knives that can come to life at any moment. Behind the third door, there's a room filled with poisonous gas that makes anyone's skin melt. How can Olivia escape safely? She can just leave through the first door. It's night, so the sun isn't shining. So the first way out is safe. Detective Callum was abroad, traveling by train, when he heard two men arguing. One of them, Hendrix, was blaming the other, Brian, for trying to steal his suitcase. Their suitcases looked exactly the same, and Brian claimed that he had just confused the two by accident. Detective Callum asked both men to open their suitcases. Do you think it was an accident? Hendrix's suitcase is filled with clothes and electronic devices and must be pretty heavy. Brian's suitcase is almost empty, with only a pair of jeans and a book inside. It must be way lighter. And even though the bags look alike, Brian for sure knew that the bag he took couldn't be his. It was way heavier than it was supposed to be. Luna found her cousin Mia poisoned in her room and called the police. Detective Callum asked Luna what had happened. She said that she was walking past Mia's house when she saw that the light in her room was on. She walked to the window to see if Mia was there and saw her on the floor. She had a key, so she walked into the house and called the police. 
she didn't touch anything so that they could investigate what had happened. Detective Callum arrested Luna. Why? She said that she saw Mia in the window. But look, the blinds are closed. If Luna hadn't touched anything, she couldn't have seen what was going on in the room. She must be lying about something. While Ms. Virginia Dell, a rich lady, was on her three-month business trip abroad, her mansion was robbed. The security was notified, and Detective Callum started the investigation. There were three people caught on the security camera, and he started interrogating them. Charlotte, Ms. Dell's cousin, said that she'd visited several times to collect the mail. Camilla, the housemaid, said that she had come three days ago to clean the house. Ismail, the gardener, said that she came every Wednesday to take care of the garden. All of them denied stealing anything. Detective Callum arrested one of them. Whom? Camilla, the housemaid. She said that she had cleaned the house three days ago. But look at the house. There's dust and dark stains. It doesn't look like the house has been cleaned recently, so she probably lied. Abigail stayed late in the office because she had a lot of work to do. She left the room to get some snacks and a coffee. Half an hour later, she returned and found out that someone had stolen her wallet. So she called the police. Detective Callum interrogated three people who were still in the office. Noel, the cleaning man, said that he had been cleaning another floor and had never stepped into Abigail's office that day yet. Sonia, the accountant, said that she had been talking on the phone with her mom. Sean, a regional manager, said that he had been in his office flooded with work. Who stole the wallet? No one. Detective Callum figured out that since Abigail went to get snacks and coffee, she must have had her wallet with her. He just recommended she should get some sleep and stop overworking. Elizabeth and her daughter Ella went abroad traveling. They were walking and shopping in one remote town when Elizabeth noticed that Ella had disappeared. She called the police and they started to look for the girl. There were three people nearby and they were interrogated. Layla said that she hadn't seen the girl. Madison said that she had seen the girl with her mom, but that was it. Amelia said that she had heard someone screaming, but she hadn't seen who it was. Who should be arrested? Layla, look, she's carrying Ella's purse. Gideon had a girlfriend, a sister, and two cousins. Figure out who Gideon's sister is if the cousins are saying the truth and the sister and the girlfriend are lying. Chloe. E is his girlfriend. Ruby. Chloe is lying. Skylar. Ruby is lying. Lily. Skylar is not his sister. If Chloe is telling the truth, then Lily is lying. Then, Skylar is his sister, who's also lying. So, Ruby must be telling the truth, which contradicts that Chloe is telling the truth. So, Chloe is for sure lying. Then, Ruby is telling the truth, and Skylar is lying. So, Lily is telling the truth. Two liars are Chloe and Skylar, and they're Gideon's girlfriend and sister. Lily says that Skylar isn't his sister. So Skylar is his girlfriend, and then Chloe is his sister. Scarlett just moved into her new apartment three days ago. One evening, she was reading before bed when she heard a knock on the door. She opened the door, and there was a confused man who said, Oh, I'm sorry. I just moved in here earlier today, and I thought it was my apartment. Oh, oh once again, sorry, and, and good night. Then he left. Scarlett didn't believe that it was just a mistake and reported the man to the police. Why? The 
The problem was that the guy had knocked. If he had really thought it was his room, he would have tried to open it with his own keys. Nora lived alone in the city suburbs. She called the police and reported that someone had robbed her house and stolen her savings that she had been keeping in a pair of socks on one of her wardrobe shelves. Detective Callum arrived with the police, took a look at the room, and closed the case, claiming that the lady was lying. Why did he think so? The room was absolutely clean. If someone had robbed the house, they would have made a mess while searching for money. The person who took the money must have known exactly where it was, which is unrealistic. Mrs. Ledger is a high school history teacher. One day, she started a sudden oral test, asking students questions from the back of the book. If the students figure out the order in which she asks, they can find the answer to their question in advance. The first three people she asked were Atlas, Eleanor, and Gracelyn. There are Zoe, Luca, Sienna, and Victoria left. Can you guess who will answer which question? Mrs. Ledger is asking students in alphabetical order. So up next is Luca, then Sienna, then Victoria, and Zoe. Another day, another test. Once again, Mrs. Ledger is asking students. This time, the first ones to answer were Zoe, Luca, and Atlas. In which order will she ask the remaining students? This time, she started with people with the shortest names. There are three letters in Zoe, four in Luca, and five in Atlas. The next one is Sienna, who has six letters in her name, then Eleanor with seven letters, Victoria with eight letters, and Gracelyn with nine. Ellie found herself locked in a dungeon and couldn't remember what had happened. She looked around and saw a door that could have been a way out, but it required a passcode and she didn't know it. Luckily, there was a hint, 1802, 3004-0803-2611. She has just one chance, and if Ellie doesn't get it right, the dungeon will get locked forever. Can you help her decide which password is the correct one? Take a closer look. Some numbers have faded away a bit. This is probably because they had been used the most. They are 1, 2, and 6. The only code that uses all of them is the last one, 2611. It must be this one. Aurora came home after a long day at the university and was excited to eat the mint-flavored ice cream she had bought in the morning. But when she opened the freezer, the ice cream was gone. Aurora asked her three siblings who had eaten her ice cream, and they all denied it. Dawn said, I'm on a diet, and I haven't been eating ice cream and stuff for a week now. Everett said, Dude, I had my chips. There was no need to eat your ice cream this time. Phoenix said, First, I don't like mint ice cream, and second, I was in my room all day, and I didn't even go down once until now. Who has eaten the ice cream? It was Phoenix. Aurora never mentioned the ice cream flavor, but he still knew it. 